All right, we're going to spend a little force acceleration, which is often a part of what we call uniform circular motion. When we talked about uniform acceleration back in the day, what did that mean? Constant. constant acceleration. So in this uniform circular motion is not constant acceleration, but constant velocity in this case, and a constant angular velocity, which implies also a constant tangential velocity. So but in this case, in a rotational sense, so circular motion. And just a little bit ago, we talked about the tangential velocity always points tangent to your circle in this case. So like at the top of the circle in this kind of counterclockwise motion. So straight left and off to the left here, it would point straight down and off to the right here, straight to the right and up. So in this case, if I was, Chris. Um, so if you have uniform circular motion, it's constant velocity. It's constant velocity. It is, is it the same as constant acceleration? Notice if my acceleration is constant and non-zero, does that mean my velocity is not changing or changing? If I have an acceleration, my velocity is changing the entire time. So in this case, our uniform circular motion refers to a constant. The uniform here. means that you're accelerating constantly at that Right, so your velocity is changing linearly but still changing the entire time. So, but in this case, the uniform and uniform circular motion doesn't refer to a uniform acceleration, but to a zero acceleration, a, a uniform velocity in this case. Cool, so our tangential velocity here, so tangent the circle in every single place. If you notice here, right at this lower point, our velocity points off to the right. In a little bit, where's that velocity gonna point? Straight up. And so in this case, there is a force and an acceleration pointing towards the center of the circle, and we call that the centripetal acceleration. It is what's causing the change in direction in this case. Cool, if I took a yo-yo on the end of a string and started swinging it wildly over my head, and then had somebody lift up a super sharp, sharp samurai sword somewhere during that motion, so we could verify <laughs> that the velocity is tangent in every single direction, right? So choose very strategically where I had that person hold up that samurai sword. Right, Chris? <laughs> All right, uniform circular motion here. So, but there's an, the velocity is tangent at every point on the circle, but the acceleration always points towards the center of the circle, no matter where you are. And that's the centripetal acceleration. So in this case, we have no angular acceleration. The angular velocity remains constant. The magnitude of the tangential velocity remains constant all the time. But there's still an acceleration that always points to the center because even though the magnitude of the velocity is not changing, the direction is constantly changing. Cool, and in this case, that's called the centripetal force or centripetal acceleration. So in this case, its magnitude is equal to V squared over R, always points toward the center of the circle. So, and if F equals MA by Newton's second law, then the centripetal force is gonna equal MV squared over R. If you guys recall, whenever I'm doing a free body diagram and I set up the sum of the forces in any one direction, the sum of those forces always add up to what? Mm, not necessarily, always the MA, always the MA. Now, if there's no acceleration, then they would add up to zero, but they always add up to MA. Well, here's the deal. Now, when we do free body diagrams for uniform circular motion, for the radial direction, the, the direction that's to and away from the center of the circle, they're still gonna, some of the forces still add up to MA, where MA is now MV squared over R. So, real quick review here. So, Newton's second law says the sum of the forces equals MA. If there's no acceleration, that means the sum of the forces equals zero. If there is an acceleration, then the sum of the forces in that direction equals MA. And now we're learning that the sum of the forces equals MA in the radial direction during uniform circular motion is equal to MA in the sense that it's MV squared over R, centripetal force in this case. Cool? So let's say you have like a free body diagram, right? And you have um, MA. So it would be a force equals mv squared over r, it wouldn't be force equals ma. You'd have the sum of all the forces. So if all the forces, if you have forces pointing towards the center, some pointing the way, the sum of all those forces adds up to mv squared over r. So all the other forces would be on the left-hand side, and you put equals mv squared over r. Cool? Sweet, let's do some application here. Number three says a an astronaut in space, and notice in space, what is g equals zero implying here? 
no gravity, so we're infinitely far from all planets and planetary bodies and stuff like that. So an astronaut in space wings a yo-yo on a string in a circular pattern with a constant tangential speed of four meters per second. If the mass of the yo-yo is 0.25 kilograms and the radius of the string is two meters, what is the tension in the string? So here, I don't really care which way we're swinging this. Does it matter if you swing in this horizontally or vertically or at an angle or anything like that? No. Why not? matter at all. So I've got this yo-yo, say right here. And again, since we're out in space, there's no gravity to worry about. So it doesn't really matter what axis we're on or anything of that sort. Um, but we're told that we're solving for the tension. So there's a rope to the center where this astronaut is. And there's a tension there, which at this point, where would that tension point? Yeah, towards the center. Cool. Any other forces acting on this lovely yo-yo? No, that's it. Great. And notice this is in the radial direction. So again, when we say sum of the forces equals ma, we got to know that that means mac here, the centripetal, which is mv squared over r. And so the tension is supplying the entire centripetal force in this case. And the magnitude of that tension, we'll just plug and chug here. What was our mass again? Sweet. Four squared is 16 times a fourth. Four divided by two. And t equals two newtons.